In this video, we're tracking Tropical Storm Elsa up the east coast as it drops a tremendous amount of rain along the way. Then we're looking at the central U.S. as multiple chances of severe weather are popping up on the weather models, and the latest data looks pretty concerning. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. First of all, I want to apologize for the mess behind me. Uh, you're probably going to see uh, this room in shambles over the next couple days uh, as we do some renovations here in the weather studio. Uh, we're trying to make it to where I can record different kinds of content uh, in different parts of the room and you know things are going to change back there but for now it's just going to be a mess hopefully you can ignore that for a little bit while we talk about the weather all right here's a big old look at the united states of america and you can see we finally have tropical storm elsa on land here and it's just spinning up a storm over here in south carolina moving into north carolina at this hour we've had a ton of tornado warnings and tornado watches go up across the southeast last night uh, and yesterday and they're going to continue today as you can see there is currently a tornado watch in effect for months much of Eastern North Carolina. And these tornado watch boxes are just gonna continue going up the coast as we go later in the day, okay? Center of circulation uh, has just passed Columbia and it's moving up north, you know, just south and east of Charlotte. The center of circulation with this storm is not what we're concerned about. We're, we're talking about the southeastern quadrant of the storm right on the coast. That's where we're expecting the possibility for some severe weather today and tornadoes. That includes Jacksonville, North Carolina, Greenville, all the way up into the uh, Outer Banks and Elizabeth. City, uh, maybe even Raleigh, North Carolina could get in on some serious weather today. Uh, if not tornadoes, then definitely some very heavy rain and localized flash flooding. And if we zoom out a little bit, you can see we've got a bunch of rain showers scattered in nature through much of the Northeast from Pennsylvania all the way up to Maine. Uh, this is going to continue as the day goes on, uh, but thankfully I don't think we're expecting anything in the way of severe weather up here today. I know we had some big storms up there yesterday. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a little bit quieter today, but definitely not uh, quiet. Also got some storms moving through uh, Indiana and Michigan. Just some heavy rain and some garden variety, summer showers and thunderstorms. Uh, but we're going to spend a lot of time talking about this disturbance coming out of Canada today. You can see we've got some rain showers really quickly skirting across uh, South Dakota into Nebraska. And we've got some more coming out of Saskatchewan, moving into Montana and North Dakota here. And this is associated with a big system that's going to cause severe weather for a lot of people over the next couple of days. And that's what we're going to spend a lot of time in this video talking about. And then, of course, we have our just complete mess down here near Corpus Christi all the way up to Houston. Uh, we've got this now uh, pretty much a tropical system just sitting stationary over the southern tip of Texas and just spinning up a ton of Gulf moisture onto the coast of southeast Texas here. These people are experiencing flash flooding and they're going to continue to experience it as the day goes on. And we'll look at some weather models to show and illustrate that today. First, let's get an official update on Tropical Storm Elsa. All right, here's the latest update on Tropical storm Elsa from the National Hurricane Center and boy this thing is picking up some speed son it's getting it and digging it like Dale Jr. especially once it gets past uh, Massachusetts up here look from 2 p.m. Friday to 2 a.m. Saturday it's moved that much and then by 2 a.m. Sunday it's going to be all halfway to England son so that's typically what happens with these storms once they get into the north they get sucked up uh, towards the poles as the low pressure system deepens and that's exactly what's going to happen with this storm but look at this we're expecting this to be a tropical storm you know all the way up the coast there which is you know a kind of unusual for this time of year we have tropical storm warnings and watches in place all the way up the coast uh, through jersey uh, long island and then even all the way up to cape cod and then eventually we'll probably see some watches all the way up the coast of maine as we are expecting you know very gusty winds and a lot of heavy rain in association with uh, tropical storm elsa with this storm as it moves off to the north speaking of rain here's your greatest flood risk from new york city all the way up to hartford connecticut through boston and portland maine you guys are under a moderate risk of flash flooding over the next couple days and that is a big deal uh, these moderate risks are not issued lightly and uh, generally if you are under one you're going to going to experience some sort of flash flooding so you know if you live in that area and you live in a flood prone area make sure you are taking your precautions now to expect the very quick rise of whatever body of water you're close to all right now that we've got an official update here we're going to look at the weather forecast models and actually look and see where this thing's going to go and what kind of impacts it's going to have in your backyard. Yeah. 
right, and of course we're gonna start off by looking at the high resolution rapid refresh model and we're starting off at 10 a.m. Uh, today. That should be around the time this video goes up. It takes me a while to edit them. But as you can see, we've got that big swirling motion here, that storm, the center of circulation is crossing over into North Carolina. And we've got these insane feeder bands of uh, very strong storms moving up on the coast towards Wilmington. And eventually they're gonna move towards the Outer Banks there. And then we're gonna see those work into uh, Virginia as well as we push this forward. You can see here as we get into 3 p.m. today, uh, big time storms along the Outer Banks, heavy rain in Raleigh. And then now uh, Central Virginia and Southeastern Virginia is starting to see the outer bands of this storm too with some very heavy rain and you know possibly maybe a couple areas that see some tornadic thunderstorms as well. Uh, now look on the northern side of this. Look at all this rain. We were talking about those scattered showers and thunderstorms that we're seeing right now in the northeast. They're going to continue to intensify. Uh, once again, I don't think we're expecting anything in the way of severe weather, uh, but we are looking at some very heavy rain coming out of these storms, especially in northwest Pennsylvania and upstate New York on the western side and then all the way through Vermont and New Hampshire here and even in uh, Ontario and Quebec, we're going to see some heavy rain today. Watch out. You know, uh, there could be a couple of these storms that go severe, but widespread severe weather is not expected. We're also going to see some of the uh, moisture from Elsa uh, come up on the Appalachian Mountains here and probably cause some stationary uh, big time thunderstorms uh, in uh, West Virginia and the Panhandle of Maryland. And if that happens, I do think we're going to have some isolated areas uh, where we see some significant flash flooding there in the valleys of the Appalachian Mountains. So make sure you're weather aware and you're prepared for that because we've seen that happen a million times it can happen out of nowhere and really there's not a lot of heads up when it comes to that stuff so if you live in a valley there next to a creek or a stream in west virginia be ready also we've got some big storms popping up over here in indiana and ohio these actually have a little bit of a better chance of becoming severe today uh, but this whole area right here is just under a marginal risk of severe weather not even a slight risk so uh, we'll see what happens i do think that if we do see some significant severe weather today it's going to happen over here around 3 p.m okay so let's keep pushing this forward. Those storms really quickly weaken out as they move into eastern Ohio. But this uh, big area of rain just intensifies as it moves into Connecticut and Massachusetts. And then here we are at 10 p.m. tonight. Center of circulation with Tropical Storm Elsa is in eastern Virginia, heading towards the Chesapeake Bay uh, with some of the heavier rain now, um, just north of Norfolk and in the Delmarva Peninsula. So let's keep tracking that out. It's going to go across the Chesapeake Bay. Center of circulation is going to be right over Delaware around 4 a.m. And a lot of those strong storms now, now, uh, the strongest storms where we're looking for tornadoes and stuff like that will actually be out to sea at this point. Really, we're mainly talking about uh, some big time rain showers uh, in uh, Long Island, uh, New York City, North Jersey, uh, much of Connecticut and Rhode Island. You guys are really talking about, you know, sustained winds at around 35 to 40 miles an hour and really, really heavy rain. I think the tornado threat is going to be minimal for you guys. But, it, you know, that's not to say that you won't see a tornado watch or a warning out here as this moves off to the north and east especially as the storm gets closer to uh, Massachusetts. You can see, you want to look at this part of the storm whenever you're looking for the tornadic part. So, you know, it kind of wraps up a little bit. You see those feeder bands making it a little bit further onto the northeastern side of the circulation. And we could see it once again, a little bit of a re-up or a re-sparking of the tornadic activity here once this gets closer to Boston. But still, the main threat here is going to be the prolific and heavy rain as it goes all the way up the coast of Maine. And then we say bye-bye to it. And on the backside here, there's going to be a little bit of a frontal boundary that causes some isolated storms from uh, western New York, uh, northern Pennsylvania, all the way down into Jersey. Uh, and then, of course, down here through the Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Tennessee, uh, these could also be very heavy rainmakers tomorrow around 6 p.m., all right? And then we're going to say goodbye to that. And look at this. What do we got going on over here? That is our next big weather story. Let's talk about that now. All right, we're looking at the central US now. We do have a slight risk of severe weather out here today and a slight risk tomorrow, a little bit further to the south and east. Uh, so let's see what that slight risk is all about and why we've been talking about it for so long. This is the system that I've been talking about for a while. Um, do think it's going to be pretty intense. So let's track it out. You, you watch this area of storms. We just looked at this on radar. Uh, that's going to skirt down to the south and east really fast. It's like a, uh, a water slide here. We've got a ridge going on. It's just going to slide down so fast. And that forward momentum uh, with a lot of these storms is what's going to cause them to be uh, as intense as they are, especially when we talk about straight line damaging winds. So those are going to dissipate. And then 
And today, uh, our slight risk is because of some new convection and some new storms that we're gonna see in Montana and North Dakota later today. Some of these look super cellular in nature. In fact, if we switch over to our significant tornado parameter model, there is actually some ingredients up there to produce tornadoes. So if we can see some of those storms actually be isolated uh, like this, uh, we could actually see some isolated tornadoes out there today uh, in South Dakota and uh, North Dakota, maybe even Montana. So from the Fort Peck Indian Reservation all the way down to the Standing Rock Indian Reservation, uh, be on the lookout today uh, for possibly some supercell thunderstorms capable of producing tornadoes. That area of storms is gonna be very daylight driven, okay? So as soon as the sun starts going down, the storms are going to weaken significantly. So therefore, I don't think we're gonna be talking about naders in the dark with this particular wave, uh, but there's another wave that's gonna pop up tomorrow that I think is going to be very interesting. As you can see here at 6 p.m., I'm sorry, 6 a.m. Uh, in the morning, we've got some morning convection occurring here with a, what could be considered a little bit of an outflow boundary from what we saw yesterday. Uh, and that's going to continue to move to the south and to the east. And that's really not going to cause a lot of problems. What we're looking for is right here. Uh, around 8 p.m., 7 p.m. Central, we're gonna see some more storms pop up in Iowa, okay? And uh, that's what we're looking at for possibly uh, some big time severe weather tomorrow. Also, we're gonna see some bigger storms pop up over here in uh, Nebraska and Northeast Colorado, and we've gotta watch those very closely. So we've got two areas here uh, as we get closer to 9 p.m. Uh, where we have uh, just uh, big time thunderstorms popping up. And both of these have the opportunity to have, you know, embedded supercells that can produce tornadoes. We do see what looks to be like a giant supercell cluster of storms popping up over here in Western Nebraska. But if we look at the significant tornado parameter, okay, this is kind of like a composite model that puts together all the atmospheric ingredients that are necessary uh, to create tornadoes. And we can see that it's actually quite a bit stronger over here in Iowa, and maybe a little bit down here in uh, Southern, Southeastern uh, Colorado and Western Kansas. So let's go back to the precipitation, the composite reflectivity. And as you can see, during the times where that significant tornado parameter is the highest, we're actually seeing storms converge and, and convect over here in central Iowa. So there's gonna be a very interesting time frame here where right at the beginning of these storms popping off here in Iowa, we could probably see some tornadoes and some of those tornadoes could actually be pretty significant. And the same thing can be said about this area of storms over here. Now, I think that the main threat with these are gonna be big hail and possibly some straight line damaging winds but you know you've got to watch if you live in central nebraska northern kansas this area right here i mean it's summertime in kansas and nebraska anything can happen with these storms if they can root and uh, take advantage of some of these atmospheric qualities i know we have a lower level jet stream that's a little bit more intense over here uh, we could see an isolated tornado or two but definitely severe weather is expected uh, for this whole area on friday into saturday okay and then what i believe is going to happen is this right here is going to turn into like a line of storms that goes like this and we're going to see this kind of reconvect uh, the next day too as some more severe weather in this area so we're going to talk more about that tomorrow and to pick you know let's say that you were wanting to go storm chasing are you going to chase these storms or these storms uh, another thing that you would want to look at is the convective available potential energy this is really going to show you where those storms are likely to be most intense and we do have uh, some increased values near 3,000 over here in western kansas but look where the bulk of that energy is bunch of it over here in northern Missouri, south uh, western Iowa. That's going to really intensify and become, you know, kind of insane near four or five thousand joules per kilogram of Cape uh, right next to where the storms are convecting. Uh, there in Iowa, and then I, I would go to Iowa. I think that's where we're gonna see the most uh, intense storms here over the next couple of days. And believe it or not, that's all the weather talk I have for you today, outside of what we just talked about. And you know, I could talk about the rain a little bit more in southeastern Texas, but pretty much it's, it's gonna rain and it ain't gonna stop anytime soon. If you live in a flood prone area, be ready. But outside of you know the severe weather and tropical storm Elsa, it's pretty boring out there. We don't have any more tropical systems to watch right now. Uh, and you know, outside of this severe weather complex, I don't know what else we could talk about. It does look like we're going to have a little bit more rain on the eastern side of the United States over the next couple of weeks, but is it going to be severe? We don't know yet. Uh, tune in tomorrow for tomorrow's video because we're going to go really more in depth on the severe weather over here in the Midwest, and we're also going to talk about how that's going to affect Illinois, Kentucky, Missouri, you know, and a little bit further east tomorrow because we'll have more data to talk about, and we won't have to talk about Elsa as much. If you enjoyed this video, slap a like on it, subscribe if you haven't already, and turn those notifications on and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.